we're going to turn a corner now, and we are going to start this idea of graphing reciprocal trigonometric functions. Sounds fancy. It is fancy. So, part one of this whole lesson is just what the heck does this even look like? We know what sine looks like. What, is the, what does the graph of cosecant look like? Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So you would think, oh, you just flip it. Well, that's partially true with some interesting little details. So here we go, pick up on the details. First of all, let's start with our parent function, y equals sine of x. That's pretty straightforward. Remember, it goes through here, and it goes up to one, and then back to zero, down to negative one, back to zero, and the same thing occurs on this side. So it just kind of goes like this, kind of like you're out on Lake Michigan on a rough day. So um, this time I showed you that this never ends. So it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. So there's a whole bunch of periods. Um, well, uh, technically there's one, two, three, cycles. So with that in mind, I want you to know that there's no break in the sine wave. Now, you would think, oh, you just take the reciprocal of everything, easy peasy. Well, it's not that easy. See, where does sine equal zero? And remember, for sine to equal zero, it's zero over some number. I don't want that to be confusing. That's the only way you can get something to equal zero. So right here, sine equals zero. Right here, sine equals zero. Zero, 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 zero. So let's take a look at one of these. This says zero degrees. At zero degrees, sine equals zero, which makes sense because go back over here. We've taught you the quadrantals. At zero degrees, there's my opposite side. That's what disappears. And here's my hypotenuse. So by definition, sine of zero degrees equals, and I don't have any dimensions on here, but it's opposite over whatever this is. Let's just call it 10. We're like, okay, well that equals zero. The problem is if we take cosecant of zero degrees, we flip this, and here comes the problem. You can't have a zero in the denominator. So everywhere that sine equals zero, all these little dots, it's a mathematical impossibility for cosecant. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing in these asymptotes, and again, there's an infinite number of them, but I'm just going to give you a few, and that's how you get started you have to first figure out what's the domain of cosecant, and it's related to sine. Wherever sine is zero, cosecant has a mathematical impossibility. So now, if we actually take a look at this, we would say, aha, now let me pause this a minute so I can get my brain in the right place. I don't want to say the wrong thing right now, so give me a second. Okay, it was a good thing I took a break. I was going to go down a rabbit trail. So, here's the thing. We got the asymptotes taken care of. What about all these other points? Like, what, how do you take the reciprocal? And what, how does that turn into a graph? We're going we're gonna to take a look at one thing that you guys can wrap your brain around, and then everything else will just piggyback that. So what I'm doing is I wrote this in green. I don't know if you can tell that, but I'm looking at pi over 4, and I'm like, hey, sine of pi over 4 is there. My y value is that high. Well, what is that length? Well, what is sine of pi over 4? Sine of pi over 4 is the same thing as sine of 45. So if I spun my spinner 45 degrees, labeled my drawing 1, 1, square to 2, it'd be opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, if I actually took my calculator and I go 1 divided by the square root of 2, I get 0.7. So that should be up a little higher, but right there is approximately 0.7. So this is 0.7 up. Well, what is cosecant of 45 degrees then? Well, it's this thing's reciprocal. So it would be the square root of 2 over 1 
and the square root of 2, if I just figure that out, I think it's 1.4, 1.41, whatever. So approximately 1.4. So when I go out, and I'm talking cosecant now, cosecant of 45 degrees is 1.4. So if I go out here, I go up 1.4. Now what's happening is this was reciprocated to here. Now, we can see right here that sine of pi over 2, let me go over here, which is 90 degrees. Remember, this is my opposite side now. This is 90 degrees. I spun my spinner 90. My opposite and my hypotenuse become the same length. So sine of 90 equals 1. We can see that in our drawing, 91. But What's the so what's cosecant of 90 degrees? Well, the reciprocal of 1 is 1, so that point stays there. And as you can see, this is like a little mountain here, or a little wave, and it's just going to flip. The difference is, it's going to go like this. Once we see that in one window, then we can kind of piggyback that and just follow the pattern. And so now, we can get an idea of what cosecant looks like. So there, all the green is cosecant. Cosecant has asymptotes, sine doesn't, because there's no limitations on sine. Okay, now let's crank up cosine and secant. Okay, now that we have somewhat of an understanding of sine and cosecant, there's a lot of similarities between secant and cosine. Let's start with what we know. We know y equals cosine somewhat well. We should know that it looks like this. And that little bad boy just goes on and on and on and on and on forever. So my, my window's a little closed this time, but I think you guys will get the idea. So it's like, okay, there's cosine. So how do we even get started with secant, question mark, question mark? Well, the first thing we have to realize is where, where does cosine of x, what values, what degree measures, where does cosine equal zero? Not zero degrees, zero. Because remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're looking for where does the adjacent side disappear in our quadrantals? Well, look here, here's my adjacent. And here's my hypotenuse. Clearly, my adjacent side does not disappear here. My opposite does. So we're not worried about zero. If we go up to 90 degrees, there's my adjacent side. So my adjacent side at 90 degrees is zero. So we look at all of these zeros where cosine crosses the x-axis, and those define where secant cannot mathematically exist. It can't happen. It's not part of our domain. So, let's check into that. Um, so, according to this, negative 3 pi over 2 can't exist. Well, that's the same thing as spinning the spinner all this way. It's the same thing as spinning the spinner to 90. Um, also, 270. If we spun the spinner all the way to 270-ish and stopped, you can see that our adjacent side equals zero again. So cosine of 270, you can check with your calculator, is zero. Problem is, that means it's zero over the hypotenuse. My hypotenuse um, is right here. It has a length. So let's just call it 10. Zero over 10. It could be 4, 1, whatever. But if we flip this and say, all right, what's secant of 270? You can even type it in your calculator you're going to get undefined. So that is no solution or not possible. So 270, which is 3 pi over 2, that's just 90 degrees times 3, same thing as 270, let's check it out. There's one of our asymptotes. So having piggybacked the sine and cosecant functions, we're going to do the same thing with secant. So secant is going to take these. Remember, if you take your reciprocal of 1, it's 1. Same thing with sine, that point right there is going to go here, that point right there is going to go here, and we can get the idea that 
um, secant is very similar to cosecant, it's just got different asymptotes. So very similar, but the asymptotes have shifted because this is cosine. All right, so now we gotta tackle tangent and cotangent. This is gonna be a little different. All right, let's tackle tangent and cotangent. First of all, I want to make a difference here. Sine never stops. Cosine never stops. There's no asymptotes. But the reciprocal of sine and the reciprocal of cosine do have asymptotes. Now, tangent and cotangent are going to be compared, but we've got to make a big difference here. We know that tangent is defined by opposite over adjacent. So we got to first wonder, hey, where does this equal zero? Because that, that's where the tangent function is going to have its own asymptotes. So where does the adjacent side disappear? Well, I looked at this zero degrees. Here's my adjacent side, and here's my hypotenuse. I can just look at that and say, hey, it didn't disappear there. Well, what about here? Yep, at 90 degrees, my little adjacent side goes bye-bye. So 90 degrees is one of our asymptotes for tangent. You can take your calculator, type in tangent of 90, and it will say error. What that tells me is pi over 2 is 90. There's an asymptote right here. Well, um, what if I went down 90 degrees? So I went here, down to here, and then there's my spinner. I'm going to go back to the x-axis. My adjacent side is also 0 at negative 90, which is negative pi over 2. So I also know that my asymptote is right here. Now if you've done a few, you look at those two and you're like, oh, it's chunks of 2. So I can expand my asymptote to here, and I can expand my asymptote to here. And it's very similar to sine and cosine. And the asymptotes are always this far apart. OK, now comes the tricky part. Um, what is tangent of 180? So you can take your calculator and figure it out, or you can spin your spinner over here to 180, and you go, hey, opposite is 0. My adjacent side is some negative number, but 0 over any negative number is 0. So I know that 180 is right there. What if I spun it negative 180? Well, I'd get the same situation, so I know it's right there. Now, what about tangent of 0? Well, opposite is 0 over adjacent, which is some number, is 0. So there, I know those are part of my tangent graph. Now, where does it go? What I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in this window, and I'm, I know this is 90. So I'm going to type in tangent, come on eyes, tangent of the thing closest, well, let's go 45 just to get started. So I'm going to go 45 to the right. I don't mean that's where my point is. I'm going right 45, so let's go like this. Pi over 4, there's my x. So I gotta go tangent of 45, make sure you're in degrees. I'm gonna type in my tangent of 45, boom, is 1. We should have known that because you know, 45, 45, 90, that's 1, that's 1, opposite over adjacent. That should have been an overainer. So that's 45 degrees, 1. So as you can see, it's coming in like this. Now, what about negative 45? So if I go negative 45 degrees, which is negative pi over 4, so tangent of negative 45, dang it, tangent of negative 45, boom, is negative 1. And again, we could have used our spinner, spun it down 45, so there's my down 45. That's negative 1, that's 1, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of negative 45 would be negative 1. And as you can see, if I typed in 89 degrees, something really close to 90, tangent of 89, I get a huge number, 57. So that means it comes in like this, this. If I typed in negative 89 degrees, you can already figure out where it's going to go, but let's check it out. It's a negative 57. So that comes real close here, way down here, and you can kind of see that it looks like that. Once you've got one window, you can just begin repeating that drawing. And that, ladies and gents, is tangent. Now let me pause this. Okay.
So, we have to be careful assuming that if tangent and cotangent are just reciprocals, that I'm just gonna flip this or, because there's a big difference with cotangent. A subtle difference, but a big difference. So let's stop and talk about it. Well, first of all, if cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent and tangent is opposite over adjacent and our asymptotes for tangent came from where the adjacent side is zero, then the reverse is true because cotangent would be adjacent over my opposite. So I have to figure out, as I spin my spinner around quadrantals, where does my opposite side just disappear? Well, look, at zero degrees, my opposite side is zero, which is a mathematical impossibility for cotangent. And so now I can kind of say, all right, well, if there's chunks of two, then I know that this is one of my asymptotes where, where zero degrees can't happen, can't happen, can't happen, and then all these are my asymptotes. And if you want to check one of them out, um, well, let's just call that good. We're running out of time. So, um, where does cotangent equal one? And that's wherever tangent equals one. So let's take a look. 45 degrees, tangent equals one, opposite over adjacent. That means if we flip it, cotangent would also equal one at 45 degrees. So let's go back to this drawing. And if you notice, here's my 45 degree marker and it's one. Now, what is tangent of pi over two? Let's check that out. Um, well, actually, okay. So, as you can see, between this window, it's coming in like this, and then pi over two, let's check this out. Uh, pi over two is 90, so we go like this, and we say, okay, tangent of pi over two, or 90, would be opposite over adjacent, which we go, wait a minute, the adjacent side disappears, so that can't exist. Because that'd be some number, my opposite side, over zero. However, if I say what's cotangent of 90 degrees, it would flip this to be zero over some number, which what's zero over some number? Zero. So I know at 90 degrees, it's zero. And if I can kind of learn from this and look at what's happening here, I can see what the graph of cotangent is going to look like. Okay, and so my last point to you is this. Tonight's homework is going to be very different. All I'm asking you to do is repeat what I just did. Sine and cosecant. Cosine and secant. Tangent and cotangent. Use these notes, but I want you to repeat it. And then tomorrow we're going to build on this a little bit. And, um, but for now, I just want you to experience the process of trying to graph these by hand. Yeah, you can type it into decimals, graphing calculator, you'll get these. But I want you to do it by hand. Work at it. Think about it. Why are these points the way they are? So with that in mind, good luck on your homework. Again, I want you to repeat what you just saw, okay? And peek at your notes if you need to. If you like this video, like and subscribe.